Yeah, g'day YouTubers. Tinker O'Toole again with another video. Today we're going to talk about uh, Hexa, uh, how to create Hexa on your own uh, grinding machine. Uh, if it's an Oregon style grinder, it's quite easy to do. Now, interesting enough, uh, still put uh, a patent on Hexa around about 2019. I think they filed for it in about 2018. And I've been involved with many patents myself in my previous job, patents attorneys and, and all that sort of thing. And what happens when you do a patent, that you put a patent out and it's pending and it's out there for review and if anybody objects to it, sometimes uh, you have to change things. So when we look at Stills patent, one thing that's interesting that's totally different from any other chain that they've got, and it may be one of the ways they got it through the patent office, is typically if you have a look at all the steel chains, whether they're semi-chisel or full chisel, so we're talking about not counting uh, tungsten carbide or demolition or any other type of thing, typically talking about semi-chisel and full chisel, still only ever use 30 degrees on the top plate, right? And they use 50 degrees on the top plate cutting angle. However... When you look at Steel's Hexa, they use uh, 60 degrees on here and they use 25 degrees on here. So they've moving away from their traditional settings. And this may have been one of the reasons, and it's a narrow curve chain as well, so it's, it's, it's thinner. So these may have been the contributing factors where they got uh, a patent uh, granted. So I looked at the, if you look at the USG chart, right, on the still hexa, you would notice that in column C, which is for the top plate angle, you'll notice that it's all 30 degrees. So we've got the USG grinder there, right? And yeah, I can do hexa on my USG grinder with the hexa wheel, but what I want to demonstrate is how we can dress a wheel and use this on a, uh, a standard clone or Oregon type grinder. But the information that I'm going to give you now, I'm going to deviate slightly from the hexa uh, profiles because I found out that I could get better cutting performance out of hexa if I set that at 50 degrees rather than 60. And if I set this at 30 degrees rather than 25, it's more aggressive. So I've gone a little bit more aggressive between the top plate cutting angle and the top plate and I get an even more aggressive hexa. So that's another interesting factor. And as I said, most likely they deviated from the 30 degrees here and the 50 degrees here, maybe to pass the patent. I'm not 100% sure, but what I do know that when you do have a patent, you need something unique, something different than everything else because you can't get a patent uh, if something is similar. So for them to deviate away from their traditional angles, they're probably saying in their patent that, hey, look, these angles and the angle coming in and the angle going down and the narrow curve is what makes hexa work really well. Now, the other thing is, if you do put this at 25 degrees, it'll be a little bit more durable. All right, 25 degrees is a little bit more durable. I do find out that 50 degrees is more aggressive and it works really good. So that's the angles that I'm going to stick with. But what I will do is show you the standard way of setting up your grinding wheel for hexa. And one thing that I will mention that's really critical, that when you put your wheel on, because what you have to do is dress 60 degrees this side of the wheel and 60 degrees on that side. So it's going to, your wheel's going to look like a V shape. If you've got any wheel run out, then your center line will be all over the place. So the first thing when you do put your wheel on, make sure that if when you do spin it by hand like that, make sure that if you do have a little bit of wheel run out, which most likely you will, I haven't seen uh, one of these grinders that doesn't have some sort of wheel run out, you need to loosen the bolt and put the wheel in a different position. You may have to do that five or six times. If that fails and you can't get a really good uh, 
centre line so you've got no wheel run out, a lot of times I'll put a little thin cardboard gasket behind here. And because the stone doesn't compress, whereas the cardboard will compress, so it's just a matter of undoing the side nut, moving this around in a few positions until you get the wheel that's really true. When you've got the wheel that's really true and you've eliminated all your wheel run out as best as possible, then it's time to dress the wheel. So what we'll do now is we'll dress the wheel. Okay, to dress the wheel, you need to put this in the uh, 90 degree position so that it's dead vertical. We need to put the top plate angle at zero. You need to make a little plastic wedge. This is just a little plastic wedge. I've got one made out of stainless steel, but I thought for the users out there, I just got a little bit of a garbage lid and just cut the plastic. Look, it's probably about one and a half millimetres thick. You don't want it too thick, otherwise it won't fit in the groove of the bar. Now, this is a 60 degree angle or 30 degree angle, depends which way you look at it, but... Uh, it's interesting when you look at angles. Depends what you're using as a zero reference point. But anyway, it's 60 degrees. Now, what you need to do is put the backstop all the way back. This will sit on the bottom. I will push that in back a little bit more. I'll just loosen this. Get it right in there. There we go. Tighten it up. Now, that 60 degrees is the angle that's on the wheel on both sides. So when you do the left side, then you turn it on the right side. Now, the little dressing stick that you actually get, we'll just zoom in there a little bit. The little dressing stick that you do get is a little square one that looks a little bit like this, but look. It gets chewed up. They're not really of high quality. I use the uh, Norton. This is Norton General Purpose Dressing Stick. It's about one inch square, so it's much better. And it's made out of uh, silicon carbide. So by making this adjustment here with the plastic, if I rest the wheel on here, I've got my angle, my 60 degree angle right so it's just a matter of starting the grinder bringing this down till it touches the stone just touches and moving backwards and forwards and dress the wheel now you dress the wheel so that you only come about halfway the wheels 4.7 millimeters wide for hexa so we dress the first side right in the middle of the wheel close enough as possible as what you can get when you've done that, it's just a matter of re releasing the clamp, moving the plastic template to the other side and starting the grinder and dressing the wheel this side, right? So start the grinder, just touch and just start dressing the wheel. It'll take you a few minutes and just take your time. Don't go at a bullet a gate. You can always, if you've taken too much off one side, you can go back to the opposite side. Just take your time and you should be able to get it good. Now, that's the first thing that you need to do. You've got your wheel dressed. That's the hardest part. After that, everything else is pretty straightforward. Now, I do have a brand new hexa chain here. Right? That's a brand new hexa chain. You can see the profile quite easily. There it is, hexa. What I will do is put this in here and show you the standard settings for hexa. Then we'll just have a look at my settings and then that's up to you which way that you want to go. So we'll just have a look at uh, the standard settings. So we'll tilt the head to 60 degrees. All right, that's our 60 degrees. And we will tilt this to 25 degrees. Right, so that's 25 degrees. I'll just tighten the bottom up. And we'll bring, I've got to bring this backstop all the way back again. 
you'll see, we'll zoom in there, we'll get a good shot of it. What you're going to try and do, and this is why I like to keep one still hexa free, I can use it as a template to make sure that my grinding wheel is going to match. Okay, so that's sitting in there. So what I'll do is readjust at a lower level the camera so we can zoom right in and you can get a good view of what's going on. Okay, so you can see the hexa on the side. And the grinding wheel comes right into it, right? Now, if you're out a little bit, you don't really need to worry if you're out a little bit. It's not going to make a big deal of difference. The most important part, well, the two most important parts of hexa is the width, the narrow curve. That plays an uh, extremely important part in the speed and the cutting performance. And the next part is this angle that comes down on the side plate. This other angle that goes down there is not so critical and neither is the gullet. But it's this the little point. That's the most uh, part we need to be concerned with. Now, I did mention before that I use 30 degrees. So that's just a matter of adjusting this to 30. So I just move that to 30. And if I adjust the top plate cutting angle, which is the head, to 50 degrees. Now I'll bring the grinding wheel in. And you can see there is a difference. And you can't, it can be a very tight fit because the wheel is just touching the raker, barely touching the raker. So it's a little bit of a tight fit bringing in on that angle uh, on a brand new chain, right? So if you find out that it's a little bit hard to get that angle that I mentioned, maybe for the first sharpening, just stick with the standard settings. And after you've ground it once or twice, uh, yeah. So it, it just fits. It just fits. So you should be able to get away with it. Wouldn't matter if the, the grinder just barely touched the back of the raker. It's not going to do much. But certainly those settings that I've just mentioned will be a little bit more aggressive uh, than the standard steel hexa. And those settings, the 30 degrees on here, is what still use on every chain, irrespective of whether it's semi-chisel or full chisel. And on the movable head, that is exactly what still use on every chain. 50 degrees, all right? So I'm using the same angles as what they use on their semi-chisel or any other full chisel. So I'm just using those angles on the hexa and you'll find out that it will cut even better. I hope that information helps. Uh, look, look in the description. I'll put some uh, other information in the description and that can be beneficial as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, bye for now.